Hi, my name is Dr. Berger. In this segment on issues in recovery, I want to talk to you about a new way of looking at recovery. <laughs> Typically, how we look at recovery is a person has a problem, they get treatment, and then we look at the results of their treatment. Now, if they're doing well, we say recovery was a success. If they're doing poorly, then we say that somehow it was a treatment failure. And I think that that's an incredible mistake for us to look at this. Now, let me talk to you about another disease, because oftentimes alcoholism is compared with, like, diabetes. But let's compare it with, let's say, diabetes. Let's compare it with hypertension. Let's compare it with asthma. I went to a lecture at the Vanderbilt Psychiatric Grand Rounds in Nashville, Tennessee, and a Dr. Thomas McClellan presented some incredible data. And what he did is he started to compare alcoholism and drug addiction and treatment with all of these other issues. Now, what was incredible to me is he started to show the relapse rates for people that are treated with, let's say, hypertension or diabetes. In terms of, if you go in, let's say you've got hypertension, high blood pressure, you get treatment, how many of the people actually go ahead and comply with treatment? Same kind of number. Somebody goes into treatment, let's say they go to the Betty Ford Center, how many people actually come out and comply? Well, we know the number's not incredibly high. Maybe it's 30, 40 percent of people continue to go to meetings. Well, you know what? Only 30 or 40 percent of people with hypertension, diabetes, asthma, follow the directions of the medical doctor. Now, isn't that surprising? Well, how many people relapse? But well, when we started looking at relapse numbers for hypertension, diabetes, asthma, same numbers. Two, eight out of ten people that get treatment have a relapse, meaning that they have to have a further intervention to help them with their problem. Now, would we say that if because I have to adjust that diabetic's insulin that that was a treatment failure because they need more insulin? No! What we would say was, my God, their condition needs some different treatment. That's all. It's not like that that was a failure. If the hi person's hypertensive medication wasn't working, are we going to say that that was a failure? No, we may need to try them on a different medication. That medication may not work for them. But do we say that they failed? No. So I think this whole way that we look at recovery and judge recovery has to be changed. We've got to look at this as a continuing care issue. And just because someone's having a problem or something didn't work doesn't mean that what they've done so far wasn't helpful. Maybe that's what needed to take place to get that person to that point in time, now. And now we just need to figure out what to do next. It does no good to blame the patient, to blame a family, to drain, blame a treatment program. What we need to do is what's needed next. And that's a big problem we have in this society because this is a society that wants to find, I call it, they, we want to play pin the tail on the donkey. Who's the jackass? You know, who's the one that's at fault? And we don't have to think that way. We don't have to get stuck into that linear kind of thinking. We can just say, there's a problem, what do we need to do about it? And we don't need to find out who's to blame. So, if you started doing that to yourself and you started to do that to people you care about, you're going to be able to get more into a solution rather than get stuck in the problem. I hope you'll try it.